Morning Hope Church. This is the first opportunity that I have had to speak to you as your pastor since the death of George Floyd last week. It was horrific, it was tragic, criminal and unnecessary. And his death has not just brought ripples across the ocean, but waves, even tidal waves, because it speaks to a deeper injustice than just the death of one man, however senseless, meaningless and tragic that was. I don't know about you, but as I was on leave last week and watching and praying, my deepest heart's cry was, Oh Lord, how do I, how do we, how does your church respond to this? I recognise there are better people than I who are speaking on the national and international stage into this situation. But I want to speak to you as a pastor, to you as the people at Hope Church. I've been living and reading again and again Amos 5, which was just read to us, but in a, a dramatic act from the book of the message where Amos speaks with the Lord's voice and he says, I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. Now Amos was speaking about unrighteous worship, but I do believe there are days and times, and this is one of them, where God speaks into our normality, into our patterns of worship, and he says, I demand and I cry for my people to act with justice. He speaks through Micah and says, this is what I require of you. I require you to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with me. Can I ask you to do five things in this season? And the first is this, to pray. Behind me is a prayer wall that, that we have in our Good Me building that comes from a time when we had 24-7 prayer and we poured our heart out to God. I'm asking you, will you pour your heart out to God? We have so many questions and so many needs for answers. So many secular commentators end their monologues by saying, we just don't know what to do. Church, we do. We pray. We pray, and as we pray, we get the heartbeat of God. His very passions become our passions. His pain becomes our pain. Let me say very clearly, black lives do matter. And our response to that statement should not be, yes, but all lives matter too. Can I put it this way to you? Because in the heart of God, all lives matter. When situations and, and tragedies like this occur, we as the church can stand and say, no, God says black lives matter. Because they are his family. They are my family. And they are your family. Secondly, can I ask those of us from the white community, can we walk humbly? Can we not take offence? Can we not just feel that we are being spoken to as if we were the perpetrator? But to listen. To genuinely listen to one another. And Hope Church, which is gloriously multicultural now. My friends from the black community, can I ask you to feel confident to share your experiences, knowing that Hope Church is a place where God wishes to build something which shines his glory to our community around us. We have lots to learn from one another. Thirdly, and arising from that, can I let you know that this is a place of security? And our security is not that we have chosen to listen to one another and be confident to share our previous experiences, but because we have founded on a gospel which says this, that God so loved the world, all humanity, 
that he purposed in Christ Jesus to reconcile himself both Greek and Jew. We could say black and white. People of all colours, people of all cultures and from every continent, that we would be a one new person in Christ Jesus. We have a gospel message, we have a confidence that we can share in this time. In January, I shared with you some of the fresh direction we were taking as a church. And at its heart, we declared a number of our values. And right at the centre of that is that God had called us to be a diverse people. And for us, that meant more than being just diverse, even more than inclusivity. It meant there was a seat at the table that our future together is shaped by our togetherness. That is a glorious gospel picture to give to a world that is in pain and anger, in fear, and trapped. In Christ Jesus, we are made one. Fourthly, let's have empathy with one another. I recognise that I have not experienced racial discrimination, that I come from a white community, I'm male, I'm middle class in heritage. But as I sit at the foot of the cross and I recognise all that Jesus has done for me and my need for reconciliation, there is empathy we can show to one another. And lastly, returning to Amos's words and, and Micah's and God's cry to us, that our response is so much more than sympathy. It's so much more than even just expressing sorrow. It's action. It's to stand in this season and say racism is an offence to God. There are many offences to God. But at this time and at this season, it is one of the largest offences we face in England in Bromley and in our communities. Let us not be reticent and fearful, whatever our cultural background, to call it out. God says, I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. Let's join our prayers with his heart. God bless you.